All right, we're at Geekdom Event Center in San Antonio, and we're doing a wholesale investor event. Try to meet as many people as we can, try to bring value. There's gonna be a panel, so just talk about being an entrepreneur, and it's a great time in the market to be finding deals, so I'm excited to be here to meet people. Kat, thank you for coming from Austin. I drove in from Corpus and uh, getting tired, but got a snap out of it. Got a long day and we got another drive after that. So we'll keep you guys updated and appreciate you always tuning in and checking us out. Deal finding, that's what everything's about, right? If you're not finding deals, you, you don't have much going on in this business. So what we've done at a, as a brokerage is say, get out there and own these properties on your own. So we really encourage that. We say, make money in and on real estate, in on commissions, on on the ownership side. And the beautiful thing is when you go meet with a seller, I present every option possible, right? Maybe. You, you think you need to sell because you gotta pay for your kid's college, but maybe you don't need to sell the whole house. Maybe we buy half of it, right? So presenting people options. We've got 170 agents finding deals. Uh, we encourage them to buy them and own them with us. I give people my balance sheet. I give them you know, proof of funds. Like we want you to own properties and we wanna own them with you. And so uh, we get deals from wholesalers. We partner up with them. We cold call, we send mailers, we send offers, we, we hustle, right? And at the end of the day, it's just a lot of lines in the water. We kind of think of all the agents as just an army of deal finders. And then my biggest, you know, just to, to throw this out there, like follow up is everything, right? A lot of people will, will make the offer and think that you didn't get a deal done or you dropped the contract, but we'll close deals six months, 12 months, you know, two years later, and right now is a really, really exciting time to be finding deals. We just closed on nine houses in Lubbock two days ago, and it was $10,000 to acquire all of them. And so in my opinion, the only deals to be doing right now are the ones that are absolute steals because they're out there. And so mailers, cold calls, offers, I mean, I, sometimes I, I'll send like two, 300 offers a day. And uh, we try to encourage that. One deal could change your life. And I've personally been doing this for about 12 years, but this is the best time that I've ever been in the business and, and have this opportunity to find these deals. Like the deals that we're gonna find over the next 12 months, 24 months can significantly change your life. So just lines in the water at the end of the day and offers, cold calls, everything you can imagine we're doing to try and find deals. So you have a career broker's license and you encourage your realtors to find creative deals and wholesale deals. What is the difference being a wholesaler and having your license as well? I can give a really good example. We have a girl that just joined the brokerage, her name's Timberly, and her first deal was a $40,000 wholesale fee. She's brand new. Wow. And I, I wanna kinda give you the story. So it's back to, going and presenting people options, right? And ultimately, I'm like, man, you're doing God's work. You're, you're giving people every option you can and you lead with what is the solution for them. So Timberly went to a house, another realtor referred her this lead, it was in Austin, because it's probably gonna be a $190,000, $200,000 listing. They didn't wanna do it, right? So Timberly went and she said, I can list your property at this price, or I could be the buyer at 150, right? And the seller didn't want to do either of those options. So she came back and she said, hey, they, they really want 190. They don't want to list it. They don't want to take my offer. So I said, put it under contract at, at 180, see if they'll take it and let's go wholesale it, right? And what she did was she put it under contract at 180. She found a buyer at 220. She also had a commission in there representing herself and she gave the seller what the seller wanted. So the, the way to think about this is whenever you're meeting with a seller, I, I typically would prefer to get the listing because that's probably gonna be the easiest for me. I'm gonna get the seller most likely the highest price, but if they acknowledge that they don't want you to list the property, 
Now you're taking off that hat of representing them and you're representing yourself, right? And there's a significant difference, but you let them pick that. So I, you know, I'm a good negotiator. I know what I'm doing and, and the game changes significantly when I'm representing myself. I also always get a commission as my own buyer, right? So every time I do a deal, my down payment is 20, 30% less because I'm representing myself. So the key is acknowledging who are you representing, what is the relationship, and then adapting. And that's the whole vision at our brokerage is to, to be an entrepreneur, right? Not just an agent, but, but somebody who's gonna build wealth, generate wealth, understands the lingo, subject to, all these kind of things. Most realtors don't get it, and they're doing a disservice to their clients and to themselves. So it's that simple as acknowledging what is the relationship and then navigating how are you gonna go about this deal. Why do you say that this is the best market to buy? Because I know a lot of realtors have been reaching out to me lately and saying that you know they're struggling. We just hired a bunch of people and they're like, oh, you know, we're struggling, you know, the market's going down, it's shifting, you know, I wanna to to try something different. How are you taking advantage of this market? So there's multiple fronts, right? It's the the agent aspect of what we do is big. And right now, as a real estate agent, as a broker, you gotta get scrappy to make money, right? And so our brokerage is doing really well because you can't rely on listings and only representing buyers. Go manage some properties, go wholesale some properties. So you're finding additional ways to stay in the business. That's a key, right? A lot of agents are gonna get out of the business. They're gonna go get jobs, right? And so we're growing and thriving as a, a brokerage. And then on the deal side, I've always been a tough negotiator. I learned to make an offer, stick to your price, and you, you almost get a, a feel for things the longer you've been in the business when you offer 190 and then they're asking 290, and then they, they check back in with you a week later. They're coming down, you're like, they're coming all the way down, right? And then I'm going lower, uh, things have changed. And so, I mean, we have a, a spreadsheet right now, 72 deals. We, we buy all over uh, Central Texas and South Texas. The only people that are market sellers right now that are actually selling deals, for the most part, they have to sell. So this is the first time since I've been in this business that I'm not convincing people that they need to be motivated, the market is. Everybody agrees rates are horrible, that you don't have to convince them of that. And so we're getting deals for free, we're getting the steals, and I've just never had this. And at least here, right, like we are blessed and lucky to be in Texas. This is one of the best economies, this is the ninth largest economy in the world. Bigger than the economy of Russia, straight up, right? I don't know if you knew that. But jobs and people continue to come here. Personally, I moved down south simply because I'm chasing opportunity. When Elon Musk opens a Tesla facility in Robstown, what's going on? That, that's not random. There's other things following and happening and it's cheap, right? So I believe that South Texas is gonna grow significantly over the next 10 years. I think that the only people that are selling truly have to sell, and you can never really time the market, right? A lot of people believe it's gonna be way worse a year from now, probably will be, but there's a ton of debt that has these adjustable loans, right? A lot of people were syndicating and buying four caps and five caps in downtown Austin, San Antonio as well, they have two, three year interest only loans. That's gonna expire when I'm talking to people like, especially apartments, are you a market seller? Like, are you really selling at the market? And people, especially in multifamily, they don't even know what that is right now. It's a, a massive amount of deal flow, but not a lot of deals getting closed. I'm getting more deals than I have ever got in my life, like 20, 30 a day, just sent to me. And I'm, I know that I'm like one of a few buyers. So I'm sticking to the fundamentals of what I know that a good deal is and I'm being extremely patient. Nine houses in Lubbock for 10 grand, and there's probably like $600,000 in equity and it cash flows. You weren't getting those deals eight months ago, six months ago, right? You're paying overpriced, and so it's a great time. Make no joke about it, it's competitive. 
people that are here, I applaud you, I commend you. But you got to get out and grind and like have a lot of conversations back to the relationships. I look at there's the relationship and the deal, and both of them are an opportunity to make money. And it's simply a matter of time if you have a really good follow-up game. And you find out who in this business is serious. Not a lot, right? And they stick out and just stay in touch with those people. And that's, that's been a tremendous uh, value for me. But I'm dead serious. I mean, right now, I'm, I'm more inspired and encouraged to buy properties that can change my life, my kids' lives. I want to buy properties with people. And I've never, 13 years with the market, the market's been hot ever since, since I started, especially in Texas, right? Austin specifically, but it is a great time to be grinding and hustling and, and putting those lines in the water to find deals. Is it all over Austin or the Austin? No, I mean, Central Texas, uh, Dripping Springs, Hutto, Leander, Lakeway, all Austin. And then uh, I mean, we have six agents in Houston, five in Corpus, one in San Antonio. This is like, for whatever reason, I've never been able to break into finding the right people to, to team up with on the brokerage side in San Antonio. but. We keep an open mind, like the Lubbock deal. I never thought I'd be buying in Lubbock, you know. So we just we keep an open mind to every opportunity that comes our way. And I looked at a deal in Louisiana. Single family bought like 80 houses, and it's great on the balance sheet. But monthly, you know, when I get the tax bill at the end of the year, I'm I'm scrambling to keep these properties. And so I started trading up into mobile home parks and small apartments, but. Ultimately, I just want to keep looking at deals and, you know, always have an open mind to, I, I love real estate. I love, you know, owning real estate. I don't know any other industry like this where anybody can do it, you know, and so I just, I just always keep open mind to everything with real estate. Yeah, what was the name of your brokerage? And I must have missed it because you were saying that even when you acquire a property, you're paying yourself a commission? Yeah, maybe keep it simple. If, if I was buying something for 100000 right, and let's say that I was getting a FHA loan, and I'm paying three and a half percent down payment, right? I can also get a three percent commission to represent myself, so I'm really paying five hundred to a thousand dollars to buy the deal. So I'm personally okay to use leverage to the biggest value and benefit that I can when I'm borrowing money at you know now six six and a half. In my head, I can make more than six and a half percent on any dollars that I invest. So I'd rather pay interest and pay a higher price and keep cash in my pocket, time value of money, and have a low down payment. So not a lot of people talk about that, but it's a huge, huge aspect of how you're gonna create wealth and save money. You know, you buy a million dollar deal, 3% on that, right? It's, it's a big aspect. Do you buy mobile home parks that are existing, or you uh, do new developments? Because we buy mobile home parks, and I love that you say you have a 20 unit. I love it. Uh, relationships, right? I recently have a development relationship. We did a development in London, Texas, just north of Corpus. We're working on one in Beeville and in Kingsville. To me, be a student of the game, ask questions, and in my opinion, a developer is the pinnacle of all of this stuff. I, that's how I view it, and so I, I would love to do more development. The, the mobile home park that we have is 14 units. They pay $600 uh, for the the lot and they do their own maintenance. Uh, it's 2.57 acres on Burleson Road in Austin. And today I got my first cold call on it from somebody wanting to buy it. I've been waiting on that call because it's a prime location, right? And so called the covered land play, if you will, right? Just keep it, but like on that deal, I promise we could increase the rent to $900 or $1,000, but it's not our goal to, and we probably have to kick everybody out. Oh, that's not really our goal. It's just, how do we keep this asset for the long run? It's beautiful whenever you don't have to pay any maintenance. That's the only one that we have little to no maintenance on. We got that from a cold call, right? We, we cold call this guy, his name was Jim Jensen, and I, I went and I listened to him talk for two hours. Like literally, I'm sitting across the desk with my partner, Alex, and he starts talking about aliens. And <laughs> I mean, he, and he goes, I'm, mo I'm moving back to Utah. I want $999,999. ,999. Not a penny more, not a penny less. That's what I want. He said, great, tied it up, get this. The guy that owned it continuously let us extend the contract over like almost two years. So if you understand this stuff, 
when we have control of it and he doesn't make us buy it and we just keep extending it, I'll do that as long as I possibly can. It's free money, right? The other thing, this, this might be valuable for you guys, but what I always do is I see what else somebody would pay for that deal. I've got the contract, I've, got, I've captured the value. What will other people buy this property for? That is part of my market research on understanding what do I have. We got offers for 1.5, 1.6, 1.7 right away. It's a great wholesale fee, right? But it's like, well, they're gonna make some money on this. Maybe we should keep it, right? Got four and a quarter debt on this property. This is what I'm talking about when these deals can change your life, right? That one deal is significant. And uh, it was a cold call. And a lot of people that are like, I can't find deals. But it's like, are you talking to 100 people a day? Are you following up? That's literally what it is. Sir, I would love to talk to you because I love your creativity. But I acquired my full mobile home park leasing it. And when I, and it was bringing only $1,000 a month, uh, my payment was $1,000 for leasing the property. And then nine months later, I, so I locked this property for the price in February and I closed in November. But the property, it was, for me, it was free because I was collecting $1,000, I was paying $1,000. Yeah, that's beautiful. I love it. Yeah, I mean, the, the, just to give a little insight quickly, like the reason I, I got so creative is I was, I always wanted to buy real estate and I started as an agent and I wanted to help other people and I would continuously run into these deals and like I didn't have like my broker or other people supporting me to get them done. Like most people don't know all these aspects. Most brokers don't. And so you just learn to, to really think through things, to ask questions. I, I encourage you guys to ask more questions and good questions, right? Like I, I try to ask like 20 questions a day and like really thought through. I try to like stump people and, and then you're always trying to learn. But in my opinion, the, the way to go about real estate is to understand the lingo. You gotta know IRR, net present value, cap rate. You gotta know these things to have a confidence to be in the room with people. And then you just throw out ideas. I think there's, there's ways to get deals done that I've never considered. I got one guy that I told him, what if I pay you $10,000 every Christmas? Well, that'd be pretty nice, right? And on an owner finance deal. And, we, and I pay him $10,000 every Christmas and he's got a gift to go take his family on vacation. So it's understanding real estate lingo, but then this is business and there's no box that you have to fit in and, and there's all kinds of structures and concepts that you can work within to get deals done.